What's going on guys? I'm Lakota from MYR Mediums and this is the 19th vlog of 2020. About a week ago I hopped onto Facebook to ask you what your fears were, but not your current grown-up fears, which would probably be things like filing taxes, calling to make doctor's appointments, or developing meaningful relationships, because that would be boring. I wanted to know what fears you had before you were immersed into the nightmare shellscape that is adulthood for the sole purpose of recreating those fears for you with my trusty iPad. The responses that I got on this Facebook post either made me giggle or triggered my flight or flight response because childhood fears are either ridiculously silly or utterly horrifying. There is no in between. On one end of the spectrum, you have bathtub sharks. On the other end, you have kids that would wake up in the middle of the night look out their window and see their bodies staring back at them from the edge of the woods with no face. One's silly and fun, the other is deeply traumatizing, and I wanna draw them both. So without further ado, let's get started. The first fear on the list comes from Kate Moran and is a variation of what seems to be a pretty common phobia for kids. So after seeing the movie Jaws, she was terrified of taking baths because she believed that a shark could get her in any body of water including the one in her own bathroom. And there were a number of other people who commented on my post who, thanks to Steven Spielberg, had similar fears. Sharks in the lake, in the pool, in the creek, and so on and so forth. And really, there shouldn't be any shame in this fear. Spielberg was apparently the master of developing animal attack fears in children. While I may not have been worried about being eaten by Bruce while I was swimming, I was absolutely horrified with the raptors from Jurassic Park. I would love to go back and calculate the total hours of sleep loss due to the visualization of raptors tapping on my window with their can opener toes. Which made no sense whatsoever, not because they've been extinct since time out of mind, but because my bedroom was on the second story. And while realistically a 2,000 pound great white may not be able to fit in the average bathtub, they aren't extinct, so... Which one is a more valid fear? The next fear on the list comes from Tyler Bernholtz and is based on a reoccurring nightmare he had when he was young. In the dream, Tyler's family took him to KFC and while at the restaurant, he had to go to the bathroom. Next to the bathroom doors was a dark cage and he could hear breathing coming from inside. When that old, innocent childhood curiosity washed over him, Tyler approached the cage and peered inside. Sitting in the murky darkness of the welded cell was the founder of the subpar eating establishment himself, Colonel Sanders. The old man rushed at Tyler, reached through the bars, grabbed a hold of him, and began to tear him apart in probably the same fashion your grandparents go at one of those chicken thighs after a particularly long Sunday service. Tyler says that he still can't look at old man Sanders' face without getting uncomfortable. Now to me, the scariest part about this dream is the fact that they went to KFC. Because we all know that if you want good chicken, you're going to go to Popeye's. You can't go to Popeye's and then go back to KFC without there being some type of remorse. Like, every time I have had KFC since I've experienced the wonders of Popeye's, the only thing I can think is, man, I wish this was Popeye's. Or Church's. Or Chick-fil-A. I would have settled for a McChicken. Why am I eating this? Fear number three comes from Catherine Nessworthy, who is actually the person who gave me the idea for this little project when she told me what her childhood fear was. When Catherine was a child, her friend's brother made up the story of Mr. Moo, an otherworldly bull with red-hot coals for eyes and acidic smoke pouring from his nostrils, who lived in the toilet. Mr. Moo would bite kids on the rear end if they went to try to go to the bathroom at night. And after hearing this tale, Catherine began to do the old hovering while you tinkle trick and continued to do it well into her teens when she went to visit that particular house and was apprehensive to start sitting on the toilet even after they moved into a different home. Because bathtub sharks are fixtures of homes, mostly because they can't travel through the small intricate drain systems, while toilet cows migrate and have been known to track their victims as far as three counties or provinces from the original butt nibbling site. Let me just think for a minute about how alarming it would be to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night and there's just a bull's head sticking out of your toilet bellowing at the top of its lungs when it sees you. 
Like even without the red eyes and green smoke coming from its nose, that would, would be alarming. Coming in at number four is Adam Sheridan with Old Man Mr. Hammer. Adam says from the fence of his old elementary school, he and his friends could look into the overgrown backyard of an old run-down house, and in the yard, there were dozens of animal skulls that looked as though they had been bashed in. The legend at the school was that the old guy who lived there was smashing the skulls with a hammer, and if you were to meet the gaze of the old man, you would be his next victim. One of the kids at school decided he wasn't scared of the legend and tossed a dog poop covered stick at one of the windows of the house. A week later, the kid wasn't at school anymore and nobody knows what happened to him. All right, so two things with this story. This is one of the best childhood urban legends that I have ever heard. Like as a kid, you couldn't have wished for a better local horror story than this. When I was a kid, my friends and I would have eaten this up, and I just, I think it's amazing. And also, Dog Poop Stick Kid is a legend himself in my book. This kid probably knew he was moving and was depressed about it, doesn't want to tell anyone he's moving because that would make it more of a reality for him, and then a couple days before he actually moves, he thinks to himself, you know what? I'm leaving. Nobody knows that. And then he hatches a plan. He does something disrespectful to the local legend's house, knowing he's leaving town in a day or two, and says, See guys, nothing happened. No old man came out and beat me with a hammer. You guys are losers. And then holds his peace, moves away, thus reinforcing the story and scaring the ever-living crap out of every child at this school. And that kid grew up to be Daniel Day-Lewis, the greatest method actor to ever live. Fear number five comes from Aaron Watkins. Aaron says that he slept in the basement when he was a kid. It was pitch black down in the cellar and he mostly slept under the covers because of the aliens that were in the nearby furnace room constantly tinkering with stuff. The aliens were tall and gray in appearance and they traumatized him throughout his childhood. I myself can understand this fear. The house I grew up in, which just so happens to be the house I own and live in now, is over 100 years old, and the unfinished basement feels like something out of a horror film. Even now, as an adult, you couldn't pay me to sleep down there by myself. I wasn't afraid of aliens, but I, I, I think it was banshees my siblings and I were scared of. Actually, uh, I know it was, and the only reason my brothers were scared of the basement banshees was because I told them about them and made them scared of the basement banshees because misery loves company and it would set the stage for some of the greatest jump scares I have ever pulled off in my life. But that's besides the point. Bro, what was up with your furnace that got the attention of the greys? Has the key to intergalactic travel been hiding in our furnaces this whole time or did you guys have something special going on? It turns out that I'm not the only one who was afraid of dinosaurs when I was young. The sixth fear on this list is from Madeline Rowe, who was afraid of the Allosaurus that lived in her closet. Now, she didn't go into too much detail about this particular fear, but I found it interesting because I remembered or thought I remembered having a very vivid dream when I was younger, possibly even before I had seen Jurassic Park. Can I remember back that far? I think I can. In the dream, I was getting chased by an Allosaurus during a lightning storm, or at least I thought I was. I was wrong about that. I thought the I thought that the Allosaurus had a horn on its nose, but that was the Ceratosaurus, not Allosaurus. Either way, I understand the irrational fears about dinosaurs, and seeing one in your closet would be unnerving. Going back to the fear of raptors that I had as a child, I would they weren't in my closet. I would always visualize them walking down my hallway and just turning into my room. And that was reinforced by the fact that in this super old house that we live in, uh, when the wind would blow, it would rattle the windows, but it had a very specific sound. It, it was just this clicking noise that sounded exactly like the raptor's toenail whenever he was stalking the kids in the kitchen and he like taps the ground with his claw that's what it sounded like so i always thought that there was raptors walking down my hallway 
Now, this one is interesting. This childhood fear comes from Amanda Nicole White, and the creature is called a woolly booger. From what it sounds like, this started as something her dad and brothers would say just to poke fun like. You better watch out or the woolly boogers are going to get you. Although she says that her family members never actually described them, her little imaginative childhood mind conjured up the image of a gooey creature with red eyes, claws, sharp teeth, with bugs squirming in and out of its mouth. She claims that she was very imaginative and paranoid as a child, so it didn't take much to scare her. And she did recount one story where either her dad or her brother had gotten a costume that loosely resembled this monster. Uh, they had barely entered the living room wearing the suit, and Amanda leapt from the couch, pushed over one of her siblings, and locked herself in the bathroom. Now this is a man after my own heart, because there's just so much pleasure in scaring people especially your own family members, and it's only made better with a good costume. And speaking of traumatizing your family members, this fear comes from Brittany Jones, whose grandmother told her that little bugs lived under her fingernails to try to keep her from chewing her nails or sucking her thumb, because if you did that, you would be chewing up bug guts and sucking spiders into your mouth, which seems awful but also like a really great way to keep your kids from putting their disgusting fingers in their mouth so good job grandma you win i wonder if that would have worked with me as a kid because i've got like i guess it's an anxiety thing but the uh that the fingers that i drew were based off of my fingers i chew the crap out of my fingernails they are tore up from the floor up. I wonder if I can convince myself that I've got bugs living out. I'd probably eat them anyway. I gotta stop doing it. It's such a bad habit. All right, last but most certainly not least, this terrifying tale got slid into a conversation we were having in the comment section on the post about the basement grace. It was brought up by Rami Hassenstab and it wasn't her fear, but rather a friend of hers that she grew up with. Normally, I would say that doesn't qualify for the video, but it turns out that it's probably the scariest thing I had ever heard, so I went ahead and included it. So she says that her friend would wake up in the middle of the night, look out the window, and see a figure standing at the edge of the woods. And the longer they would look at the figure they would realize it was their body, but the figure had no face. And this entity would just stand there facing the woods without moving. And if I saw that, my mind would shatter. Like the fact that this person isn't in a mental institution right now is a miracle. Apparently, they are convinced it wasn't a dream because it felt real every time it happened. And that's... The kicker, every time, how many times did this happen? That's, I got goosebumps just talking about it, actually. That's, I don't know, that's so creepy. And it was funny because in the in the comment thread, like, that story literally sparked, like, an anxiety attack in somebody that was reading it and <laughs> went and posted on their own Facebook page. They're like, I... I am so terrified right now. I can't. <laughs> it was. It's a good story. I like this. Uh, that is. That's horror movie fodder. I dig it. I don't know what sort of spiritual stuff they were going through at the time, but I, I don't envy them. And that's gonna do it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Now there were over three hundred people that shared their childhood fears with me. There was no way I was going to be able to fit all of that into one video, so I decided to make a series. So if you didn't see a visual representation of your childhood fears in this one, don't despair. I'll probably get around to it in the next video. Later this week, I'm going to be filming with my chiropractor who's helping me make a video about spine health for we artists out there because most of us are suffering through horrible back pains because we sit like bananas for 12 hours at a time working on projects will that be the next video i don't know i don't know how long that's going to take to edit but that's coming guys thanks so much for watching i appreciate you and if you like the video please 
press the button down below that reflects that emotion and tell me in the comments what your childhood fear was and it may end up in one of the next videos. Have a good one. I'll see you next week. Want to see something crazy? I can swallow my tongue. No joke.